Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. Here today we're going to learn how to make this glassy, reflective, shiny text in Adobe Illustrator. You see it all over the place. You see it in a lot of logos now and you see it just generally being used by a lot of people. And it's a pretty cool little styling of text. It certainly is interesting. And this is actually the text that we are using in our 3D logo tutorial there for Adobe Illustrator. So if you're doing that and you want to know how to make that text that I drag in, here's how you do it. First thing we're going to do is well, I'm going to close out the show file and I'm going to create a new file. And this file we're going to make it 450 pixels wide by 250 pixels high. And we're going to set the orientation to landscape. That's the wider and not so tall orientation. The other orientation would be portrait. We want landscape. Hit OK and up pops our file which is right here now we're going to grab the text tool first off and we're going to hit the little arrow keys or we can just hit shift x is the hotkey for swapping your fill and your stroke colors and now that the stroke is in the front you can switch which color is selected by hitting x okay two little neat hotkeys for coloring and then to get rid of the stroke just hit the slash key Okay, some nice little hotkeys there. And let's grab the text tool, which I have selected. We're just going to use a plain myriad font. I am going to type the word on all lowercase letters. Click media. One word. Okay, I'm going to select that. And we're going to increase the size to something pretty big. Let's try 72 points. That's pretty good. Let's go a little higher. Let's try 95. That's more like it. 95 looks good. Maybe just a little less. Let's try 90. There, that looks good to me. So we've got our word here, which is going to be the company name essentially, just this company name I came up with. We're going to select the text and right click and hit create outlines. What this is going to do is it's going to get rid of our editability. Okay, we're no longer going to be able to go back and change the font. This, well, we can change the size, obviously, because it's a vector. We're not going to be able to change the font or any of the kerning options or width of the text, spacing. Well, kerning, spacing, same thing. But we're not going to be able to change any of those character palette-specific options for text because now we've just reduced it to plain old artwork. This may as well just be paths you drew with the pen or shapes you drew with the shape tool. This is no longer recognized as type by Illustrator. But that's good in this case because we want to apply a gradient to this. But the one thing it does do is when you un or when you create outlines of text, excuse me, it's grouped. You need to ungroup it so we can select these words or letters individually. In this case, we're going to be selecting words. Just right click and hit ungroup. Now you can see we can select any letter individually. What we're going to do is select the word slick. I'm just using the regular old selection tool. And I'm going to bring my gradient palette in here. Gradient palette's right here. And I'm just going to apply this plain black to white gradient. If you've got your swatches palette open, window. Well, you can get the gradient palette open in here too. Swatches, right there. Grab that black to white gradient and change the angle to 90. Now, 90 is going to put the light, which is white in this case, on the bottom and black on top. We're going to change that slightly. I'm going to select the white handle here in the gradient editor. And I'm just going to drag this up to 5 or 6, well, in this case, 7% darkness. So we've got a little bit of gray in here. And then I'm going to drag this down to, let's try about 50. 50 looks good. I'm going to select the word slick. And I'm going to select this gradient. I'm actually going to click on this gradient thumbnail here in the gradient palette. And I'm just going to drag it up and drop it in my swatches palette. I just created a swatch out of that gradient. The reason I did that is because we're going to select the word media. And we're going to select that swatch in the swatches palette to give this that same gradient. Now the exact opposite of 90 degrees is 270 degrees. I could also simply just do negative 90 degrees, but I kind of like doing 270. And here you can see we now have the light on top, dark on the bottom. So it kind of sets apart the two words. You can tell this is slick and that's media. It just helps kind of distinguish the words there in your text. So now what we have to do is stroke this text. So I'm going to select the stroke dialog box. Again, if you if any of these dialog boxes are not open, um, or palettes, I should be saying, you can go to the window, and any of them are up here. All the type options. 
but we're not going to get into any of that in this tutorial, so you don't have to worry about that. But anything that you don't have open that I have open, just come up to the window options and get it open. So in the stroke palette here, we're going to give this a 1.5 point stroke, okay, and I somehow switched over. 1.5 point stroke, and well, it helps if you have your stuff selected. Select a stroke and just click the black stroke, and now we can just come into the stroke palette and edit it just like that, whatever way it works. Now, we have the stroke set to black. I actually want to set it to white, but what I want to do is in the stroke palette, there's this little align stroke option. I want to click the one to the far right. That's align stroke to outside. Click that, and it's just going to move your stroke to the outside of all of your letters. That's something that can come in handy. You can also move it to the inside, or the default is just to center it on the path. I'm going to move it to the outside in this case, and I am going to click my white swatch in my swatches palette. I'm just going to drag it out and drop it on the stroke color here on my toolbar, just like that. Now, it looks like the stroke has disappeared, but it really hasn't. It's there. It's just white, so it's blending with the background. I'm going to select all of this, and I'm going to group it. So I'm going to hit Command or Control G. So we ungrouped all that text before, and we just regrouped it. But we regrouped it now, and it's all stroke. It's all got its fills. We're going to come up here to Effect. We're going to go to Stylize and Drop Shadow. I'm going to hit Preview, and you can see that's a crazy drop shadow. We don't want anything nearly that big. We're going to change the mode to normal and the opacity to about 15. We're going to change the X offset to negative 2, and the Y offset, let's try 1 or 2. No, 1's good. And we're going to change the blur to 2. Hit OK. And you can see, now we can see the white stroke. Okay, that's a little trick. You put a little bit of darkness behind it, and suddenly you can see the white stroke. So that's going to make your text pop a little bit. All right, the last thing we need to do is add a glass shine to this text, and we'll also add a little reflection. Grab your ellipse tool. So we can drag that tool, the shape tool, excuse me. So we can drag, grab the ellipse from the flyout menu, Shift X to swap your fill and stroke, or in this case, we have to just get rid of the fill because it's a gradient. And we're just going to change that to white, select the stroke and hit the slash key to get rid of it. We want no stroke. Now just drag out any lips. Uh, just make it however you want. I'm just going to throw mine right down the center there. Now, here's where it gets a little tricky. We're going to select the group. That's the text, not the path we just created. We're going to come up to Edit, Copy. Now I'm going to select that path we just created, the ellipse. I'm going to grab my transparency palette here. And I'm going to double click in this blank space next to this thumbnail. I just created a mask. I'm going to hit edit, paste in front. I just pasted my text back in front. Now I'm going to get rid of the stroke. I'm going to select that none button. I'm going to select the fill and change it to white. So now we see all of that white ellipse that we put in there. But it's masked off, so it's only affecting the text. So when I select the path here, you have to make sure you have that path selected, not the whole layer, just the path. We're only masking that one path. We're going to reduce the opacity to, let's try 20, mm, definitely needs to be more than that, let's try 45. 45 looks pretty good. You can see how we have that nice little shine going through there now, and it reacts differently on the slick word than it does to the media word, because remember, the media word has a different gradient. The gradient's going a different direction, so it looks a little different, so that adds a little bit of interest to your text. last thing we're going to do is create a reflection. So we're going to select this layer, or we're going to go Edit, Copy, and Edit, Paste in front. So now we have an exact duplicate of both of these. We're going to select both of these. Well, actually, I'm going to create a new layer first, and I'm going to unlock that layer. I'm going to select both one group and one path and just drag them and drop them onto Layer 2. I'm now going to lock up Layer 1. I'm going to select Layer 2. I'm going to go to Object, Transform, Reflect. Now, the Reflect Transformation command in Illustrator seems a little weird because when you, you think you want to reflect it vertically, but what Illustrator is asking you is what axis do you want to reflect it along, the vertical axis, in which case it's going to flip it horizontally if you're thinking flipping horizontally in Photoshop or even in Flash. If we want to flip it so it look li looks like it's just sitting upside down, we need to flip it along the horizontal axis. If we preview it, you can see we just flipped it right upside down. 
I'm just going to use my arrow keys to nudge that down. I'm just going to set it just below the word, just like that. Now I'm going to apply a mask to this entire layer. So select the layer. I'm just going to double click that same open area in the transparency palette. I'm going to grab my rectangle tool. I'm going to draw a white rectangle here. You can see I'm showing most of the image, which is fine because I'm going to grab my swatches palette here. I'm just going to drag it in. We're going to give this a white to black gradient. Drag that gradient palette in. <laughs> I'm getting all my palettes in here. I'm going to grab the black to white gradient. Actually, I should keep that transparency palette in here so you can see we have in our mask we have a black to white gradient running from white on the left to black on the right. I'm going to rotate this to 270. We want it to show for full strength up at the top and then just fade out as we get toward the bottom. So I'm just going to slide the black up until it disappears. Until that part disappears. If it doesn't disappear entirely, don't worry about it. It's just because you're not using true 100% black. You have to go to CMYK and make it a rich black. But don't worry about that because we're going to lower the opacity to about 50. So it's really going to disappear altogether. So you can select your layer thumbnail here. Make sure you're deselecting the mask. I'm just going to move the transparency palette out of the way. Lock that layer up. And you can see here what we have is glass text with a reflection. It's that easy. And as you make more and more of it, you're going to be able to do it much faster than it took me to explain it because obviously I was explaining it. But, hey, that's how you create glass text. I certainly hope you've learned something in this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. And please go check the site out. It's www.tvtvid.com. Thank you very much for watching.